Okay, we are going to be talking about fractions today. And the goal of this lesson is when it is done, I want you to be able to write common fractions as equivalent decimal fractions. So let's just make sure that we all know what that word equivalent means. We know that equivalent means equal to, or it means the same thing as. So we're gonna be taking some common fractions and turning them into decimal fractions but their meaning isn't going to change. They're going to mean the same thing. So let's start by looking at this number line, and we are going to just be naming some simple fractions. Now I know that this number is a fraction because it's in between zero and one. It's not a whole number, it's somewhere in between. Now in order for me to figure out what fraction this is, I'm gonna find my denominator first or how many different pieces there are to this line. So I'm gonna start at the zero, and I'm gonna count how many pieces I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It took me ten different jumps to get to the one, so I know my denominator, or the total number of pieces, is ten. Now the numerator tells you how many pieces you have, so if I start at the zero, I'm gonna jump until I get to the star, because that's how many I have. So starting at the zero, I have one, two, three. It took me three jumps, I have three pieces. So the fraction that shows me what's on this number line is three tenths. Now, this is a very simple common fraction to convert to a decimal fraction because when you say three tenths, you're saying the decimal place that that three belongs in. We already know that this first place right here is the tenths place. So three tenths shows me this, three tenths shows me this, therefore these two fractions and decimal fractions are equivalent. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, I can tell that I'm dealing with a fraction because this star is showing me a number in between two and three. Now I do have some whole numbers this time though. I have two holes already. I have two plus a little bit more. So I'm gonna count first and find my denominator, see how many total pieces I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten pieces again. But this time my star is not at the three. I'm gonna make one jump, two jumps, three, four, Five. five jumps and get two and five tenths. Now, I can turn this into a decimal fraction. Now we know that whenever you have a whole number, that goes in the ones place because I have two whole ones and five tenths. Whenever we say the word and, we know that's going to be where our decimal point goes. So two and five tenths. Now I'm going to put the five in the tenths place. And I could then say that these two common fractions and decimal fractions are equivalent. This shows two and five tenths, and this shows two and five tenths. Okay, let's try one, but make it a little bit harder. Okay, I have another number line. I can tell that I'm dealing with a fraction because it's in between zero and one. I don't have any holes already, so I'm gonna go ahead and find my denominator. So, it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five pieces total. And if I count to the star, I have one jump, two, three, four. So I made four out of those five jumps. Now how could I turn this into a decimal fraction? Well, I don't have a fifth place. I can't just do this. That number is four and five tenths. That doesn't, that's not the same as four fifths. I can't do this, that's 45 hundredths. You can't just take numbers and stick them in decimal places. 
we need to find um, a denominator of a power of 10. The easiest way to do that is to think about money. We're all very familiar with money. And let's pretend that we had a dollar. Okay, that's a power of 10. And I need, my denominator tells me how many pieces there are. I need to split that dollar into five pieces. Now we know in fractions that fractions are equal pieces. So I need to split into five equal pieces my dollar. So if I had five friends and a dollar, how much would each of them get? Well, I know that each friend would get 20 cents. Now you could have made an educated guess to figure that out, or you could have done one dollar and divided it five ways. I know that it's 20 cents because when I count up those 20s, I'm going to count all five of them and get 20, 40, 60, 80, one dollar. So each friend would get 20 cents. Now, we don't have just one friend, we have four of them. So I could say 20 cents, 20 cents, 20 cents, 20 cents. If I had four out of those five pieces, I would have 80 cents. And I know that I could show 80 cents like this. So I could say that four-fifths is equivalent to 80 hundredths because this fraction on the, on the star on the line showed me four-fifths, four out of five jumps, but it could also show me 80 cents. If we think about this as being one dollar and each piece being 20 cents, 40 cents, 60 cents, 80 cents and I could get to my final dollar but I'm stopping here at the star. So four fifths could be equivalent to 80 hundredths. Let's look at one more. Okay, um, we've still got a number line. I kind of, I drew a bar this time but it means the same thing. And um, I know it's a fraction, it's in between zero and one. I don't have any holes. Let's go ahead and get my denominator. Well, it looks like I have one, two, three parts and it looks like this is at the first part this would be one out of those three one third is where my star is at now if I wanted to turn this into a decimal fraction how would I do that well let's think about it again like money if I had a dollar and I need to split my dollar up this time into three parts. Now I'm going to use a benchmark that I already know with money that I'm pretty familiar with and that's quarters. Now I know that if I took four quarters is a dollar. I could then say that this each of these is probably going to be a little more than a, than a quarter because if I have three quarters that's only 75 cents. I know I'm going to need more than that. So I'm going to start by making uh, my best guess, and I would maybe start with 30. So I could say 30, 30, 30. Is that going to work? No, I can see that it's not, because when I add those together, I don't get a dollar. I get 30 cents, 60 cents, 90 cents. That's not enough. Get rid of these. Oh, well, we'll just... Sure. So I need something bigger than 30. Okay, let's try again. Maybe I could try 33. If each piece was 33. Okay, let's add those up. 33 cents plus 33 cents will be 66 cents. 99 cents. I know that I can't have any, I couldn't put another penny in each one. 34 cents in each would be too big. So even though I'm not exactly at one dollar, this is as close as I can get to making sure that all of my groups are equal. Now how many of those groups do I need? Well look at this fraction. This is telling me that I need one out of those three. One out of those three would be 33 cents. I could say that one third is equivalent to 33 hundredths. 
Okay, so let's switch it up a little bit for this one. I have another number line, but this time, <coughs> sorry, instead of showing a common fraction, we see a decimal fraction. And this number line, it's not giving us any numbers so we can count the denominator, find the numerator. All it's telling us is the decimal fraction, and I would want you to tell me what is the common fraction. How could you figure this out? Okay. I would go back. Okay. Uh, sorry. I just forgot what I was thinking. So if we want to turn this into a common fraction, I would still think about it like money. And if you had this amount in money, you would have 75 cents. So if the number that you have, or the amount of pieces you have, well, I know that's a numerator. What I need to find now is my denominator. My denominator is the total number of pieces. Well, the total number of pieces in a dollar is 100 pennies. I would need 100 pennies to have a whole dollar. I only have 75 of them. So I can tell by that my denominator is going to be 100. So this could be my common fraction for the decimal fraction, 75 hundredths. Now, we could also make this a simpler fraction. Well, I know that 75 out of 100, if I turned that 75 cents into quarters, I would have three quarters out of four total quarters. I could say that 75 cents out of 100 cents is the same as having three out of four quarters. These two fractions are equivalent. So if I needed the common fraction for where this star was on the line, I could say that three-fourths is the same as 75 hundredths. Okay, now it's your turn. This is what I want you guys to do in your math journals for um, your assignment. One thing I want you to do, you have a two-part assignment, is to use a number line and show me one and three-fourths. Now I want you to show me as this common fraction, but I also want you to write it as a decimal fraction. Second part of your assignment is to find the equivalent decimal or common fractions. So this is one-fifth as a common fraction. What would it look like as a decimal fraction? This is 66 hundredths as a decimal. What would it look like as a common fraction? One-fourth as a common fraction. What would it look like as a decimal fraction? All right, get to it. Have fun.